The smash attack doesn't have the attack register, so it's just an animation for now. We want to be able to register attacks, so let me exit play mode. I'm going to go into the smash folder. States, player, smash. And I want the scriptable object that registers attacks, which is called attack. So player, smash. I think the animation was named landing. And so player smash landing attack. Mm. For now, I'm going to guess the numbers here. Start time, maybe 85% of the animation. In the end, would be 99%. This attack is not going to be based on collider impact. Uh, this is going to be more like an AOE. So it doesn't have to it doesn't have to collide or it's not going to launch anybody into the air it doesn't have to face the target either i, th I think i should be named this the, the lethal range i'm just going to pick 1.5 and max hits i'm just going to do 10 for now so what this means is that whenever the player goes into the smash animation the 10 enemies that are within the range 1.5 they're all going to get killed i'm going to click on the player this animator, go into the animator window, go to the landing part, and I want to add the ability, the attack registering ability, drag it in there. We don't have any code for registering an AOE attack, so I'm going to go into the damage detector. I'm going to go down to the detection part. Okay. And if the attack info says the attack doesn't have to collide, in that case, we want to get the distance from the target to the attacker. So this, referring to the target being hit, I want to get the position versus the position of the attacker. Attacker position. And I want to get the magnitude of that. So that would be the distance. First, let me just log the distance to be sure. I want the target name. And I want to see the distance because I want to make sure that we have the right distance. 1.5. And if that distance is shorter than the attack range, which we named lethal range, then we're going to do something about it. First, let me save and go back to Unity to check that this code is working. So if I click play again and do the smash, We can see that one of the dummies is at 7.3 in terms of distance from the player. And the other one is 16. Okay, so it's working. So 1.5 might be too short. Let me go into Smash. I'm going to change this to 2. Then I'm going to go back to the code. And I'm going to say if the target is within the lethal range, then we tell it to take damage. F12 to go into the definition. Right now, we don't have any death animations uh, specifically designated for AOE attacks. So let me just fix get animator. Just a temporary solution. And I'm going to say else if. The attack, if the attack doesn't have to collide, then as a temporary solution, I'm just going to trigger the death animations associated with lower part of the body or the animations that is associated with the legs.
So whenever the target is hit by an AoE attack, it's going to trigger either the lower body part death animation or the leg part death animation. Let's save all the code. And go back to Unity and play. We want to see if the code works. Okay, looks good. So when we do the smash, the enemy that is within the lethal range, 0 0.3 here, gets killed, and the other one is pretty far away, 37. Let me play again. I want to see what happens if none of the enemies are within the range. Okay, nothing happens. But for something like this where the player is punching the ground, I think I want a camera shake, whether the attack is hitting the enemy or not. So let's fix that. I'm going to go back to the code, to the damage detector. And here, we don't want to shake the camera when the attack is an AOE attack. For AOEs, we want to shake the camera no matter what. So I'm going to go back to Unity and create an ability just for shaking the camera. I don't think we have that kind of an ability, so I'm just going to create it. Call it Shake Camera. And I think it's going to be very similar to the gravity pull. So let me press Control T, get the gravity pull. It's going to be a simple ability. Name it Shake Camera. Get rid of all the previous code. And we want the timing of the camera shake. So we'll just call it Shake Timing. The range is going to be 0 to 99%. And right in the beginning of the animation, if the shake timing is zero, then we get the camera manager to shake the camera. We also want a little private variable to specify whether the camera is shaken or not. It's true. But if we have some sort of a delay with the shake timing, if it's not shaken yet, we want to check the timing of the animation versus the timing of the shake. If we're past that timing and the camera is not shaken, and shaken yet, the shake is true, and we have a delayed camera shake. And whenever we exit, we reset this variable back to false. This is going to start as false. So basically, we shake the camera right in the beginning of the animation, or we, if we have a shake timing specified, then we have a delay. Save everything, and I'm going to go back to Unity. I'm going to go to the Smash folder and create that shake camera ability shake camera name it player smash landing shake camera the timing 85 percent and let me add that ability to the landing add another slot and drag in the shake camera ability And I'm going to click play, see if it works. So whenever we punch the ground, we get the camera shake. But for this kind of simple abilities like punching, the fuck? I think. Hmm. 
this should be true. So let me compile the code again and play one more time. So camera shake works for the jab. It also works for the ground punch and it should also work for the uppercut. There's still a lot of issues to take care of. Things like you can punch the enemy over and over again, even after they're dead. We don't have any code for hitting dead bodies, but for now, we're just focusing on the core gameplay. Uh, we'll fix the details later. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching.